Hello everybody. As you can see, this is not a schnauzer, but it is a puppy and it is one with a nice wire coat. So I'm still going to use her as an example on getting started with your puppy and to go over some more of uh, the information on stripping the body and just continuing basic and fundamental steps for hand stripping. Right, Birdie, are you ready? Are you ready, Birdie? Birdie's ready for anything. So the first thing I'm gonna do, because she's a wiggle worm, right? So I'm gonna help myself out. Here, she's pulling both of us off the screen. Is So I have the grooming loop, but it gives her tremendous freedom and she can go all over the place. And it can be difficult. So, to help me keep her in, one place at least to keep her from spinning. I have another grooming loop attached to the pole over here, see? And I'm gonna attach that to a ring at the bottom of my grooming loop. Now, if you don't have a ring at the bottom of your grooming loop, that's fine. You can use their regular strap collar and attach it there. And now Birdie can't spin. She can still wiggle and be crazy, but she can't spin, so that's gonna help me. It's okay if they step off. I'm gonna keep them from falling off, but I'm not gonna keep them from thinking that they're gonna fall off because that teaches them to be a little more careful. All right, let me lower her down a bit. All right, my main tasks on her are, even though her head looks okay because it's dark, it's really quite shaggy. And so I want to get that to a more smooth condition. I mean, a, a wire hair pointer is kept in a rougher, more tousled coat than a, than a, a, sh a show standard schnauzer, but I still want it to be shorter and I want to be able to always have some new coat coming in. So that means I have to be taking some coat out. And the other task is this body coat. Um, she's about four months old almost. And so now this coat is a really good length that I can grip it easily and pull it out, especially if I put a little ear powder in it. And she's old enough now, she can give me a little bit more cooperation, a little bit more concentration and attention to detail. So I'm gonna put a little ear powder on top of her head, sprinkle it, sprinkle it on the moving target. There you go, rub it into the body. Let me add just a little bit more. I don't need a lot, but I do want to spread it pretty uniformly all over where I'm gonna work on the dog. All right. Now she's moved again. So let me get her a little bit more in the frame. There we go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lightly rake. That's gonna reduce the density of the coat that I'm working with, pull a little undercoat, just make it a little bit easier. This helps her get used to the sensation of a little bit of pulling all over because that's new. She's not used to that. This is her first time. If I just start wholesale pulling in one place, she might have a, a more negative reaction. So I want to rake a little bit everywhere that I'm going to pull. And if, if this was a puppy that I was raising from a younger age, she's just staying with me. If I was raising her from an, a younger age, I would do this raking earlier. I would do the raking before I would even think about um, actually finger plucking or pulling just to help the puppy get used to that idea and that physical sensation of a little bit of pulling uniformly all over her body. I'm raking her opposite side right now. 
then her shoulder. I'm gonna grab up here to hold the, the noose and hold the neck skin loosely so that I can rake the other side without her getting her nose all in my business. All right, I'm gonna come around. I'm gonna do the same thing on the head. I like starting with raking. It's a good way to get them used to it. Good way to settle them down a little bit. Get them a little bit in tune with what we're doing. I am not gonna fuss too much at a puppy for being uncooperative, par for the course. I will be careful of getting into any um, power struggles with the puppy. So I don't want to start those early either. They teach the wrong lessons to the dog, either to shut down or to really amp up the resistance. And I don't want either of those. So I try to keep it a neutral experience for the puppy. All right, we're about six minutes in. Good amount of raking done. Now there is since I got this big wad of hair out from raking, there's a lot less that needs to be pulled. And I can get to it a little easier because some of the undercoat got raked out also. So you can start with your fingers. If, you're, if you've got good genetics, the coat should pull easily like hers does, even though she's a moving target. Again, I got my fingers in the in the um, collar part of the loop and a little bit of pinching, a little bit of skin, just very lightly, so that I have some tension on the skin that makes the hair come out easier. And also just to give her a little bit of control, a little bit of reminder that we're doing a thing together. Good. <laughs> and these first sessions with the little puppy, I'm not interested in getting everything. I'm really just interested. No, no. I'm really just interested in getting started. Now, one place I'm gonna focus is I am gonna focus on her back, right down the middle of the top line. And uh, I would do this with a schnauzer too. This is the area where the coat on the dog, the coat on a schnauzer is going to be its hardest. So if you have a puppy and you're not sure what kind of coat you have yet that you're dealing with, pull the coat off the top line. You know, it takes six or eight weeks for it to grow back into where you can feel the texture of it. So give it a couple of months. But when it comes in, you'll have a good idea of what the hardest coat on the dog is going to be. Um, coats can get a little harder with time as you pull them, but not significantly. So if, the, um, if you've pulled the top line coat down pretty tight, one or two times, for sure if you've done it two or three, and you're sure you're not breaking the hair, that's as hard as that puppy's coat's gonna be able to grow. Genetics controls how hard the hair shaft is, how big around the hair shaft is, how long the hard part of the coat is before it turns soft, and how easy or how hard it is to pull it from the skin. If this was a schnauzer coat, I would say, oh, this is a pretty fine coat. I don't think that this coat's gonna be all that productive to strip. Um, but part of that is because in schnauzers, the finer coats are more associated with being hard to pull. For whatever reason that is, finer, softer coats are harder to pull in schnauzers but this fairly fine 
it's fine, but it's not soft coat on this wire hair pointer. It's, um, it's pulling out pretty easily. So that's just some of the variations that you see with different breeds and different individuals, even within the same breed. And you can see I'm, I'm being pretty random. I'm moving around, I'm switching hands. I'm uh, working on different areas. And you can see as I get closer this way, as I come down lower on her ribs, she's more sensitive. She's a little more prone to look at me and say, what are you doing, lady? So I'm going to note that. And then that's going to be an area that maybe I do a little more of at the very beginning or a little more raking because that's a place where the puppy's going to lose patience with me sooner. Now this hold that I'm doing right now, I've got my arm over the dog, underneath, blocking the back legs. I'm not holding her up, but I am blocking her from going forward. And between that and the, uh, the secondary uh, grooming loop that I have that I showed you at the beginning, I can keep her relatively still so that I can give her more good girls than bad girls. And at this point, the only thing that I really scold them for, there's only two things. One, if they start flailing so much, they're gonna break my grip. I don't want them to learn that's possible. So I'd give them a hard no for that. Or if a puppy turned around and um, kind of feeling its oats a little, puts its mouth on me, um, whether it's seriously or just kind of experimentally, I'm gonna give a pretty sharp no for that because I don't want I don't want that to persist in the, as an idea in the puppy's head. That said, I also want them to hear good dog way more often than they hear bad dog. So that means I really have to pick my battles and not get fussy with them because they're not perfect. I'm only going to fuss at them for breaking really important rules. The don't flail around too much. Don't flail around so much I might let, have to let you go. And don't put your mouth on me. Good puppy. Good puppy. Look for opportunities to say thank you and good puppy. I'm just doing on the other side what I did on the side facing you. Keep it, get a little even. And you can see I left quite a bit of hair still here, but compared to the other areas, you can see that there's, that there's uh, still, you know, there's less hair than there was, but there's still plenty to pick at in another week or two. And that's what I would tend to do, is put a puppy up on the table once a week, set a timer for 10 minutes or so we've been going for about 13 minutes so getting to the end of uh, this stretch I didn't really need to get a, a tool for this coat if I needed to uh, I've got my my stone handy I could use that that gets grabs a little bit more coat but it's a little bit more intense so a puppy might or might not, but might uh, have a little bit more mm, resistance to using that. I could also use a pumice stone. Kind of same thing. Maybe it gets a little bit more of the hair a little bit faster since I've been doing this for a while she's a little more used to it if I'd started with this I probably would have more resistance and if you work this coat every week or two for five or ten minutes at a stretch you know in six weeks you'll have new coat breaking the surface and um, you'll get some nice layers in and you can either go right into rolling a coat like this if you do it once a week or every couple of weeks or at least um, 
a pretty clear idea of what kind of coat you have so you'll know um, what work you're going to have to do either whether it can go in the ring early and soon or whether it might need a little more time to mature both in body mind coat all of those things good all right before we quit i'm going to do a little more work on her head i'm going to use the stone the the tool for this because i i want to make a little bit more progress in a little shorter time i'm holding the skin underneath her jaw because holding her muzzle would be really invasive and it would really get us on the fast track to power struggle and I want to avoid that. So I try to use the minimum amount of force that still allows me to get the job done and still teaches them a little bit of being still. Good puppy. There, I got what I wanted. I got to be sure. Good puppy to let her know. Don't take it for granted when they're good for you. If you only give them attention when they're fussy, guess what? They're gonna be more fussy. Good puppy. Quit on a good note before they start struggling again. Good girl. Oh, thank you. Thank you, puppy. Thank you, puppy. Yeah, yeah. Now, because she's a little puppy, give her a little bit of minute to get me, give me lickies. If she wants to jump on me, paw me a little bit, now's a good time. So she knows we're still friends. And then know that there's a time when she can kind of get me because I was getting her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I can ease back into work. Good puppy. Put my hands on her chest. Hand on her throat. Turn her head back around. Slow, slow, gentle petting. Stand her back out. Up, oh, stretch her back out if I need to. Good puppy. Good puppy. Do a little bit more work done on this side. All right, she's doing fantastic. Let me know what your questions are and uh, what you'd most like to see. I have some ideas of what the next month of content for the basic fundamentals courses, but I'd also really like to know what you most want to learn so I can look for opportunities to film those situations. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your, your patience over the last month. Had some health issues and some things going on in my personal life that's made me a little less available than I was planning to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend the course all the way through the end of the year to make sure that you get all the content uh, that you're entitled to and all the teaching that I can give you on fundamentals and basics. Love your dog for me.